This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Let's never watch that again! <laughs> Are you talking about us? <laughs> Sunday afternoon is a lazy time full of freedom, but for some reason it also seems to inspire a deep melancholy in many people. I guess feeling a little down about the approach of Monday is understandable, but why waste the free time you have left by sinking into sentimental inui? It's a very Japanese thing. Because of my occupation, I've made a lot of friends overseas, where they tend to enjoy their days off without any of the gloom. To quote, why think about that crap when there's partying to do? Bwah! <laughs> Probably as a result of spending so much time with those guys, I'm not the type who gets depressed or wistful on my days off. But among my classmates at this school, there seems to be a few who suffer from the typical Japanese lake wind late weekend blues. I can understand in theory, but it's honestly pretty hard to empathize. Hey, Sparkly, what's up? Makina practically skips down the road, playing with a strange keychain. At a glance, that looks like a pretty plain little figurine. Is that thing really as rare as all that? Oh no. Please no, not more tuna fish, man. And it's a cash cow franchise, too. Tuna fish man again? I gotta keep an eye on that one. I'd been training my body, as I usually do on the weekends, but Makina persistently hung around, pestering me to take her to the shopping district by the station. So here we are. Lately, the girl's been furtively buying toys like this wherever she goes with me. Probably because Amine gets mad when she wastes too much money on stupid crap. How is Amine being the responsible one? Don't mention this to Amine. She'll get cranky at me for encouraging your bad habits. <laughs> There's also no cure for liking tuna fish, man. Throw a line from some daytime soap opera at me, will you? Amine really needs to stop watching that crap. No wonder she thinks like a 50-year-old. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what? What? Me? <laughs> Having assumed the bad influence of the dirty old lady Makina lives with was responsible for that line, I'm flustered to find the finger pointed at me instead. <laughs> no you. Makina narrows her eyes to, uh, to slits and turns to me with a smirk. Alright, Makina, that's enough. <laughs> Stop pronouncing things like that. Apparently, quite pleased with having cut me down to size, Makina cheerfully jogs on ahead of me. Amine and the others did this, did say that my behavior had been influencing Makina, but hearing it outright from the girl herself is a bit of a shock. Seems I really do need to watch my step. I don't get it. In the workplace, I was considered something of a moral exemplar. Yeah, but you're also not working with, with elementary school girls. <laughs> Makina suddenly stops a few steps ahead of me and points down the street. Hmm? A hundred meters or so ahead, there is something unusual enough to halt even Makina's momentum. In front of the Mishima Cape Station, the Mishima Cape Station, a cordon of jet black luxury cars have blocked off the road where the local buses usually stop. Uh oh, are the goons back? Ten odd men wearing suits mill about the area, talking into their cell phones, restlessly checking their watches, or discussing something in small groups. For, for Yakuza, they're too white collar. They don't have the intimidating, aggressive body language characteristic of gangsters. That said, this bunch aren't exactly inviting, either. Most people would probably just give them a wide berth. Go say hi, Makina! No, don't. Don't know. But whoever they are, they're not anyone we want to get involved with. If they were friendly, respectable guys, they wouldn't block the road in such a nakedly intimidating way. I haven't often seen Makina admit to being frightened like this. The girl's brave enough to grab snakes and centipedes with her bare hands, but something about this group seems to be bothering her quite, quite strongly. She's obviously very uncomfortable. No reason to hang around here. Alright, I think it's time we head back. Instead of those guys, maybe we should be worrying about the homework that you haven't even started. Yeah, yeah. Don't just stand there, let's get moving. 
As Magna holds her head in her hands and moans, I poke her in the back, urging her down the street toward the dorm. As she finally starts to walk, I shoot a quick glance back toward the station area. The group of men in business suits has come to attention, facing the ticket gate in apparent anticipation. Just now, a special express train seems to be pulling in. The station employees are running around making preparations of some sort. Some sort of big shot arriving? <laughs> is is it is it um is it the colonel who who's coming back to town? But then old Sneep stops the marching band by sucking on the lemon. <laughs> That's I bet it's that. Makina looks up at me with a distinctly uneasy expression. It's nothing. Don't worry. I ruffle Makina's hair gently and do my best to reassure her. We walk back to the school, still a little tense from our encounter with the mysterious group. <laughs> When I enter the dorm of Makina, Sachi turns to greet us with her usual smile. It may be the weekend, but apparently she's decided to spend it scrubbing the hallways clean. As always, our maid's zeal for her duties knows no bounds. Yo. Wow. What? No. All of a sudden, I seem to have developed a ferocious headache. I press a hand to my forehead and close my eyes, but can't su suppress a bitter grimace. Sachi, you need to be careful about offering stuff like that. Makina is one thing, but Sachi too? Where did we go so wrong? Don't go reading my inner monologue. What did you do to Sachi? This is your fault, I assume. No, I don't want slutty maid. I, I want I want modest maid. Actually, I don't even want modest maid. <laughs> but she's the best we have. Listen to me when I'm talking to you. Also, don't turn people into slutty maids. That is not true. Don't believe her. Why would you listen to Makina? That's complete nonsense. Stop dancing on Makina's strings. No. No! No! I interrupt Sachi's outrageous proposal, grabbing her firmly by the scruff of the neck and lifting her off the ground. <laughs> wow! <laughs> if this is a diplomatic ship, where is the ambassador? <laughs> With the other hand, I seize the miscreant who's been putting troublesome ideas into her head. My prey dangling from both hands, I bellow loudly enough for the entire dorm to hear. Get out here, Amine! Amine! Amine appears in no time at all. Still gripping a potato in one hand, she favors me with a look of undisguised annoyance. Hey, I'm a little concerned about something here. These girls are getting worse by the day. Might that possibly be my fault? Huh? Oh, I thought you were going to put it all on Amine. Yeah, we were telling Sachi to show her underwear more. I see. I had a sense such a crisis might be approaching after Makina's words earlier, but there's it's still something of a blow to my fa to face my fears made reality. Yep, she's digging holes like in the movie Holes. She's looking for buried treasure, you know. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at physical abuse, but that was unexpected and funny. <laughs> and honestly, kind of warranted. <laughs> um, no, if she's, if she's making sexual innuendos, that's on you, Amine. <laughs> Yeah, she obviously picked up that nonsense just now from a man, and I guess that means me. Sorry, I've seen the error of my ways. Um, Yuji hasn't really talked about sexual stuff all that much. That's more Ben Amine. <sighs> 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 
Don't act like you're above all of this. Yeah, freaking right. Amine answers in exasperated Kanze dialect. She seems to have concluded that my repentance isn't going to produce any real results, and I guess she's probably right. But I'm now firmly convinced that my behavior has been a bad influence on my two younger classmates. I'll try to tone down the guy talk and stick to nice, harmless chats about pasta or whatever. <laughs> dun 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 <laughs> Hey, Amine, we have one here that uh, doesn't seem to have been influenced by me in the least. Can I use her as a mitigating evidence? Sorry, impossible. I throw myself on the mercy of the court. Wow! When it's Sachi who's doing the insulting, it's a lot more cutting. In this case, an external influence or two could pretty much only be a good thing. Wow! Everyone needs to stop being so mean to Michiru. That said, the thought of Michiru remade in the image of Makina sends a cold shiver down my spine. That's way worse. We've got nothing but eccentrics in this dorm as it stands. I'd really like to avoid that sort of hybrid super pest into the mix. Cleaning to Amine, Makina reports the earlier events. <laughs> We're pretty sure Al Capone was in town. Nah, they weren't freaky scary light or like something I could see you driving. You don't want me to answer that. <laughs> well, she literally just repeated word for word what I just said. Sorry, I've seen the error of my ways. え <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Michiru, stop talking for a while. I have not eat smoked cheese before. I have not eat it. I have not become eat. Uh, they were a Tesla. <laughs> Wasn't the colonel returning for lentil? That would be great. <laughs> Amine, I've been worried that you might be the sort to stealthily hit the bottle in the kitchen when the kids' backs are turned, but things have progressed to the point of visual hallucinations. <laughs> We're buffeted with roars of Kanzai inflicted rage. However, I've already tuned Amine out. I'm, oh, I'm currently wondering about the one conspicuous absence from our group. Yumiko is always absent. By the way, I haven't seen Sakaki today. Is she out again? Yeah, yeah, some, some, something about an old guy sitting on the roof of the church and sucking on a lemon, who cares? I don't know what stuff you're referring to. What does Sakaki's absence have to do with your alcoholism? <laughs> <laughs> I could see Amine being the type to hit the bottle. At my side, Sachi hesitantly begins to speak, but quickly fa falters to a stop. What? Should I not have asked? For once, even Michiru has something of a restrained expression on her face. <laughs> Parent-teacher conference! I want to meet everyone's parents and how weird they are. Or how normal they are. <laughs> I desperately want to meet Michiru's parents. <laughs> I, I need to see them. <laughs> 
Her parents are visiting the school? Even though it's a Sunday? I'm pretty sure her parents are, like, on the school board or something. Which is why she's able to get away with these box cutter shenanigans. What? Hey girl. Oh boy. Here I was, thinking the job of a principal consisted solely of signing off on paperwork. It seems I was mistaken. I owe you an apology. <laughs> the principal is an underrated character. Anyway, there is something I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> so I've been thinking we should be allowed to eat brownies in class. Whoops, sorry about that. After swinging the overly ornate door shut, I wander over to the espresso machine and pour out two cups of coffee. I set the cups down on the table. They're both for me. <laughs> Just the sort of dignified slab of wood you'd expect a raging giant monkey to fling it dramatically through some window. Then I take my seat on the sofa. <laughs> Put up your feet. So, Tachibana, what's going on? <laughs> The principal grumbles a bit at my confident movements, but nonetheless sits down across from me without being asked. Amine told me there's a parent-teacher conference taking place today. <laughs> I need to meet Mr. and Mrs. Matsushima. <laughs> I think you're awake, but it's the weekend. I think you're aware, but it's the weekend. There are no classes for anyone to sit in on, and there shouldn't be any teachers here to have a conference with. Weird enough, but on top of it all, you're at the school for some reason. Also, there was a clump of, expex of expensive jet black cars sticking out like a sore thumb around the station this afternoon. And finally... <gasps> finally, there was an old guy sucking on a lemon on top of the church. I haven't seen Sakaki all day. I don't know much about anything about her background, but... That aloof attitude makes me think that her family environment is... Probably unusual. Judging from the way the others reacted, all of this seems to be connected. Am I on the right track? It's a private matter, after all. I didn't feel comfortable dragging it out of them. So I came over to get the story from a more official source! You! <laughs> the principal lets out a single sigh and stands up from the sofa. Opening a desk drawer, she takes out a brochure, then returns and drops it on the desk in front of me. It's the familiar Mihama Academy admissions pamphlet. Yeah, although I just flipped through it, really. This sort of informational brochure is generally packed with thinly disguised advertising or obtuse legal disclaimers. Either way, it tends to involve a lot of flowery, empty phrases, not genuine facts and figures. I'm not twisted enough to find pleasure in picking out all the lies and half-truths I can find in this sort of thing. Lies and half-truths are the same thing. <laughs> This pamphlet in particular was written about this truly bizarre academy of ours. I expect there's more lies than half-truths, and mostly pretty blatant ones at that. By the way, Yuji, your parents are coming too. No! Principal Tachibana flips the pamphlet open to the first page. Just as I had expected, it's filled with pseudo-poetical sentences describing the school and its mission in highly exaggerated terms. Is there something in... Hmm? The principal's pointing to the opposite page. On the upper half of the brochure, there's the words Principal Tachibana Chizuru, accompanied by a weirdly formal photo portrait. And then we have the Chairman of the Board of the Trustees, accompanied by a different name, Sakaki Michiaki. HA! KNEW IT! I KNEW HE WAS A HIGH UP FOR THE SCHOOL! If they were hinting at that earlier. So this would be... The Principal nods deeply. So, yo. Sakaki Michiaki. Ooh. I want to meet him. Let's show him how, we, how nice and normal all of the kids are. Oh, Ijo Tolad is playing Age of Empires 2, the definitive edition, which is the way you should play. Hey, Yumiko. 
Hey, girl. Sakaki Michiaki shi ni tsuite. Anata wa dore gurai shitte iru no? I know his favorite ice cream flavor is Heath. As much as the next guy, no more. Haven't had any reason to look too deeply into him. Sakaki Michiaki is a name you'll find extremely frequently in the papers, magazines, and television news. The East Beach Express Group, owners of a rail network with a prominent line running along the east coast of the Kanto region. <laughs> Wait, the Kanto region? That's an actual thing? I thought that was only in Pokemon. <laughs> As this powerful corporate's body pre <laughs> As this powerful corporate body is the president. <laughs> As this powerful corporate body's president, it's only natural that he's referenced in media on a regular basis. On the surface, he's the head of the, one of the leading Japanese business conglomerates and an extravagant multimillionaire. And behind the scenes, he's a heartless tyrant, ruthlessly wielding brute force to perpetuate the aggressive expansion of his company's rail network. He doesn't hesitate to shatter the lives of those who stand in his way. Oh, he seems like a nice guy. <laughs> In particular, there's a lot of talk about his borderline fraudulent tactics in acquiring land. Apparently a legacy of the previous president, under his leadership, the group has earned a family, a friendly nickname, the Eager Bandit Express. Oh, so maybe he's not a super nice guy. I'm really not particularly interested in that sort of gossip. The fact that I know his name anyway is a decent indication of just how much of an infamous celebrity this man is. Well, that's about the extent of my knowledge. I hope this is the part where you tell me I've gotten the wrong idea about this guy. Oh, man. I was hoping. The principal takes a brief sip of her co coffee. The way that Yumiko's turned out, I figured her family wasn't going to be normal. I appreciate the brutal honesty here. No, he's exactly what the media says. That's not the case. I'm expecting he's got a beard. A big old beard that covers his entire face. And it's a dark purple beard to match her hair. There a reason for that? Can I meet him? I want to meet him. After stopping the alarm, the principal glances back at me. No, I want to meet this guy. No, I don't think that's a good idea. The man comes all the way out here to visit his daughter's school, then leaves without even meeting her. From that behavior, it's pretty clear the story of Mahama Academy's founding is directly connected to Sakaki's past and family circumstances, even if the principal doesn't spell it out for me. I don't think it would be right to hear anything more than this from a third party. I'm sure it involves those complex reasons she has for being here that you were hesitant to talk about last time. That would mean you'd have to tell me things my classmates want to keep to themselves. And if you left the sensitive parts out, I'd end up with half an unpleasant story, which is just as bad. So Nah, I'm just looking to avoid making my life more complicated than it needs to be. I stand up from the couch and begin to move toward the door. Is she sucking on a lemon too? But before I can make my exit, the principal's words bring me to a halt. She doesn't like beards. その時間だけ外に出ているというわけじゃないの。父親の来る時は決まって寮の屋上から下を見下ろして通り一遍の視察をする父親の姿を見ているわ。ふん。And she, she's tried to stab me in the past! Well, how do you think she's gonna react today? <laughs> she's probably gonna, like, bring a gun or a taser. I don't know where you got that information, but it must be a pretty shaky source. Actually, I was... <laughs> I was stalking you guys while you were stalking <laughs> Sachi. <laughs> what?! <laughs> I'm not any closer to Sakaki than any of the others are. If anything, it's the opposite. 
あなただったら少しは榊さんのケアもしてあげられるかと思ったんだけど。Act on the basis of wishful thinking and you'll never get anything done. More importantly, don't you have a VIP to roll out the red carpet for? I'll be leaving now. I like this calm guitar music. I sort of sense this in our previous conversation as well, but the principal seems to be expecting some sort of convenient chemical reaction between me and the other students. Yes, I'm putting an effort towards creating something like a student life for myself, which means trying to maintain a basic standard of communication with my classmates. But if that were to cross the line, if I were to push my way into their private lives, there's no way it would end well for anyone involved. Every route ends with the people dying. After all, we're talking about people driven into something very close to an isolation facility. In the worst case scenario, prying could quite literally be a lethal mistake. If I ever get involved with their problems, it's only going to be when they reach out to me on their own initiative. That's smart. Since Sakaki hasn't shown any intention to do so, I'm not going to make the first move. And I'm convinced that's the correct policy. Damn it! The principal never gives me anything but trouble. <laughs> now you just need a broom and dustpan for when his purple beard hairs fall onto the ground. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> You, you don't know that. Maybe he's maybe he's a jolly old soul. Probably not. Yumiko,の父さんに会ったことあるの？うちの父さん料理人じゃない？だからいろんなところと交流があってね。それで、ここに入る前に、そういう風に。そういう風に。そういう風に。そういう風に。そういう風に。そういう風に。そういう風に。
<laughs> First, I want to see the vending machines. I need me a sprite. <laughs> mm, damn. He's blunt. <laughs> that would be a great ba source of backup power. Is this like being used as an insane asylum or something? I I would I am not I would not be surprised if that were the twist. Except they're able to go into town and like people say hi to us, so probably not. But I hope it's not a Professor Layton style plot twist. まあ、だからこその、この視察なのよね。何も問題ないですよ。大丈夫ですよってアピールのために時々こうして大ボスがやってきて適当にうろうろして帰っていく。I yeah, I'm starting to get the feeling this game is going to get dark <laughs> farther down the road if they're talking about stuff like that now. <laughs>。Um, what? だよね。but but my classes <laughs> no Sachi you're the opposite no I want to say hi to the boss <laughs> It would be so awkward and so great. <laughs> I, I, you know what we need to do, folks? Third floor, laundry room, get a sprite, give it to the big boss. Be okay, big boss? Welcome! I just got you a sprite. By the way, I'm Yuji. <laughs> Your daughter tried to murder me. I got a beef to pick with you. <laughs> oh. Well, CG. Oh, she that's a nice face. <laughs> well. Whoosh. That is not a very pleasant look on her face, I must say. As soon as I opened the door to the rooftop, I met with a piercing glare. Oh, we actually are going to, to talk to her. Much like the last time we met here, Sakaki is standing straight as an arrow near the edge of the roof, her hair dancing in the sea breeze. But unlike last time, there's undisguised hostility in her eyes. Yo. Holding eye contact, I answer her sharp gaze with a light greeting. She's clearly on her guard, so I stop my approach with a good distance still separating us. Why are you in your school uniform when it's a Sunday? What are you talking about? The reason I'm here, of course, is that I was slightly worried about a certain woman who I knew would, would be brooding all by herself. Thanks to that meddlesome principal's unsolicited tip, I knew Sakaki's location. And having been handed that information, the idea of leaving her up here alone started to feel strangely unpleasant. Of course, if I told Sakaki the plain truth in this situation, there's no doubt she'd aggressively reject my concern. A coincidence, of course. I did hear today was a slightly special day, though. <laughs> Don't lie. So instead, I offer up a vague mixture of lies and truth. A.K.A. a lie. The ball's in Sakaki's court now. Don't worry. I didn't start the conversation last time either, remember? Nicely played. Sakaki breaks her sidelong glare in my direction, her gaze returning to the ground below. Since the dorm is only a three-story building, the people below are clearly visible from our vantage point on the rooftop. Just now, the principal is leading a man in an expensive-looking dark gray suit, and what seems to be his entourage in our direction. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Sakaki presses, purses her lips tightly. As the approaching figures draw closer, she pulls herself back from the edge of the roof just far enough that she can't be seen from the ground. 
Her placement clearly conveys her desire to observe and her absolute rejection of being observed in return. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like a natural laugh. There's a voice from below. I casually glance toward the sound. The man in the expensive suit has a fake smile plastered across his face. He, I knew it was a fake one! His laughter is utterly hollow, to the point that it's actually physically unpleasant to hear. Yeah, it was fake. It's the forced laugh of a person who hasn't known real amusement in a very long time. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Let's fix that with a controlled shock. Sakaki flinches at the sound. She opens her mouth ever so slightly, takes a few small breaths, and then closes it again. Her sharp gaze is clearly focused on the man in the expensive suit. She watches the man fixedly as she, he struts along confidently next to the principal. It's the expression of someone sizing up an old and bitter enemy, but there's also something like sadness there. We haven't been formally introduced or anything, but it seems safe to say that the man in the suit is her father, Sakaki Michiaki. Compared to the man in the pamphlet, he seems slightly scrawnier, but I'm willing to bet that that's just the result of some subtle photographic retouching by his PR people. Yumiko simply stares down at him in silence. Those aren't, or shouldn't be, the eyes of someone looking at their father. That said, they're not full of murderous rage, either. Her eyes are just sad. Sad and empty. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me show you the Rose Garden, Machina sleeping on the cat. Um, okay, let's not show you the Rose Garden. <laughs> At the principal's words, the group stops just a little distance from the dormitory. Uh, hey, bro. I need my sprite. He turns to his side, fixing, <laughs> fixing the principal with a cold-eyed stare. We haven't asked. <laughs> He's like, oh man, doggone it, I wanted to see her. <laughs> oh, that makes me mad. Let me grind my teeth off. Should, shouldn't have left my retainer at home. With a single irritated grunt, the chairman turns on his heel and begins to walk off. He strides toward the front gate with his party, exuding overbearing haughtiness to the end. He doesn't look back. I'm so glad we got the picture the, with the chairman, like, Gah! Sakaki stares unblinking at his quietly retreating figure. There's no particular emotion on her face now, she simply watches until the end. When his distant figure reaches the school building and finally passes completely from view, Sakaki drops both hands to the iron rail, leans forward, and breathes a heavy sigh. She stays that way for a long time, looking straight down at the concrete beneath her feet. The sea breeze picks up a long, after a long interruption. Salty air rushes past us from behind. Sakaki's long hair and school uniform flap noisily in the wind. When the gust dies down, there's a moment of pure, perfect silence. <laughs> Skaki mutters a few words to the concrete beneath her feet. There's a hint of weakness in her voice. That's right. I offer a concise reply. I'm not tactless enough to poke my nose into other people's business out of mere curiosity. I think we've been over this. I'm not going to ask you anything. But if you have something you want to talk about, I'm willing to listen. I don't know what Sakaki really wants from me right now. But I think her words pretty clearly indicate that she was hoping I'd ask her. Something. Of course, that doesn't mean I now have free reign to bar barrage her with questions. That isn't why I'm here in the first place. Why won't you see your father? Is there a reason you're in this school? What exactly do you think about Sakaki Michiaki? There are plenty of things I'm interested in knowing. But it's not, li I, it's not like dragging out the answers out of her is going to change anything. If explaining things would offer Sakaki some relief as her classmate, I'm willing to ask those questions. But as long as I don't know that for sure, throwing my curiosity at her would exceed good-natured meddling and land solidly in the territory of outright prying. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think you do. Sorry if you find my reasoning unpleasant. This is just my personality. <laughs> I guess he's just... different. 
From Sakaki's expression, I can understand she doesn't mean them that in a negative way. Her usual harsh, prickly aura of rejection seems to have softened somewhat. Like I just said, talk all you want. I'm not going to stop you. This is the girl trying to stab us with a knife? Sakaki pushes herself away from the railing and walks across to the door. Yeah. Sakaki's slender hand throws the door open with surprising firmness. As soon as she's inside, it closes solidly behind her. The wind picks up again, gusting strongly across the rooftop. A few stray grains of sand from the nearby beach blow into my face. Guess I'll head back myself. She's like, BUSTED! YOU DID ONLY COME OUT HERE FOR ME! <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to understand Sakaki right now. But if my arrival at this school, this dorm, my entrance into her life, can end up working to her advantage somehow, I think I'd like to make that happen. Simple as that. Right now, the fact that I'm living this carefree, peaceful life fills me with guilt. It's a burden I carry with me every waking moment. If I can lighten that load of self-condemnation -con slightly by doing some half-assed pseudo-counselor volunteer work, then there's something in it for me as well. Of course, the way I'm thinking about this in such a calculating, mercenary way adds a whole new layer of guilt on top of it all. On second thought, I don't know if I should be counseling anyone. No, you really shouldn't. Slowly descending the stairs, I mutter quietly to myself. Sinking deeper into a Sunday afternoon, melancholy that has nothing to do with the approaching work week, I continue my little soliloquy for some time. <laughs>